In the year 2000, as rappers such as Jay-Z, Nas, Ja Rule, DMX, Master P, and the Cash Money Millionaires had their names well established in the rap game, you have a man who came straight out of St. Louis, and a lot of people feel like he came out of nowhere, and he put his city and his clique on the map. But this man will end up having a run that I don't even think he even predicted for himself. To say Nelly was on fire when he first came out in the early 2000s would be a pure understatement. A lot of people don't come into the game and make such an impact with their first album. A lot of people aren't fortunate enough to have their first album go diamond. A lot of people aren't talented enough to have a number one record in every genre. Now the reason why I'm doing this video is because people have tried to discredit Nelly as he, if he didn't contribute anything to the game of hip hop. Well, I'm here to break it down because he really did. Dude broke down a lot of barriers and I just hate in hip hop they just try to wipe away what everything that he has done and everything he's accomplished. Now regardless if you're a fan or not, but people need to realize he more he's more than just the man that's married to Ashanti. You know what I'm saying? Dude has number one singles, he has number one albums, he has anthems, he has classics, you know? If anything, he's actually someone a lot of artists wish they could be. An artist who was able to put out enough classic material and hits that keeps him on the road, you know? A lot of these artists can't do that. They have these hits that come and go, and we, we don't even remember some of their hits prior a year later. That's what I'm saying. But that's why on this episode right here, I want to dedicate it to Nelly and just break down his, you know, incredible, his unpredictable album runs. <laughs> Let's go, man. Nelly will be born Cornell Haynes Jr. Nelly would end up growing up in the University City neighborhood of St. Louis. Although he was known for his sports playing, he had a thing for rapping and singing as well. After graduating high school, Nelly tried working fast food jobs and other regular 9 to 5s, but he felt like it wasn't for him. So he would get into the streets hustling hard. But he also would be a part of a rap crew on the side. They'll call themselves the St. Lunatics. Now, at the time, the leader of the crew would end up being Ali, and the crew would end up getting their big break when they would drop their local hit, Give Me What You Got, in which Nelly would end up being able to display his Now, Give Me What You Got did make them local superstars uh, in St. Louis and in surrounding areas, but they wasn't able to get a deal. But they would keep dropping local hits in the city. And we can't forget that all of these songs and their future hits will be produced by the in-house producer by the name of J.E. Now, after linking with Kuda Love, who was managing Mace at the time, Kuda Love would suggest shopping Nelly as a solo artist, and that way he'll be able to get the team on if he blows up. Nelly would end up recording four songs for his demo, so therefore he can shop around the labels. Those songs would end up being the song Country Grammar, aka Hot Shit, E.I., Ride With Me, and Batter Up featuring the St. Lunatics. A lot of labels actually passed up on signing Nelly, but they would end up getting a deal in Universal, and Nelly explains the deal and how everything was structured in his uh, interview a few years ago. Ooh. That got in the contract, power. in the contract, long as Nelly sell 350,000, 250, tell me when I'm lying, 250, <laughs> the group get a deal and everybody gets solo options. Mm. Now I made sure of that in, in, when, I'm, when I'm stepping forward, I ain't worried about just putting out the song that I'm on right. and, and then having everybody else. No, 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 no. I'm making sure before I put a record 
out, my group is good. Period. So you're already looking at my group is good before I touch a stage, before I do anything, my see. boys got a deal. By the end of 1999, Nelly officially had a deal with Universal Records. And this when they would start recording and finishing up the album Country Brahma, which would they end up completing within three weeks. And by the year 2000 hit, they was off to the races. The first official release by Nelly as a major label artist will be the title track Country Grammar, aka Hot Shit, which will end up being released February 29th of 2000. Now, as a young kid in Memphis, I still remember watching this video for the first time on The Box. Now, if you grew up doing that era, you knew what The Box channel was, where you get to call in and try to request your videos, man. But I instantly became a fan once I heard this. A lot of people thought it was gimmicky or thought it was nursery rhyme or whatever like that. But it was definitely something different and it was let you know it was time It was definitely changes happening within hip-hop at the time and yeah I think I'm 10 or 11 years old when Nelly first came out So but he instantly hit the ground running now Nelly's expectation for album sales was he was hoping to just to go gold and able to go on tour but the album Country Grammar will end up being released June 27th of 2000 and things would get all the way tumped up Country Grammar will go on to sell 235,000 copies in its first week and it would debut at number 7 on the Billboard charts and by August it would be platinum with the sales of 1.5 million sold and at this point Nelly's album was selling 200,000 copies a week which kept him in the top position between the number 1 spot and the number 5 spot. Now of course me being a child I had the Walmart version but eventually we end up getting the real version later on. Now, we know the hit singles far as Country Grammar, uh, E.I., which was definitely a smash shit, Ride With Me, which was another uh, banger, and Battle Up. Now, some of my favorite cuts off this album would be St. Louis, you know, where he paid homage to his city, and uh, Greed, Envy, and Hate. I love that one because Nelly talks about his hustling days and just the jealousy that money brings and, you know, don't let the game screw you. And uh, still the show featuring the same lunatics. Uh, and also, which ended up becoming a, a favorite of my mom's and mine's was uh, Loving Me. You know, as far as the sample and just the whole thing, I liked that right there. You know, that whole thing right there was just, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a hit. Like, if you was around and you just uh, uh, old enough to remember the year 2000 or the early 2000s period, it was a whole different fun era. You know, and I can't forget about the skits that Cedric the Entertainer provided on the album. But I'm going to say this to those who may be watching this video, who may be from St. Louis and you're old enough to remember how it was. I would like to know. Let me know in the comments when this album dropped and when Nelly and the St. Lunatics just hit the ground running. Like, how was the, the atmosphere and the vibe? You know, in the city of St. Louis. Like, let me know in the comments. Like, did you go get this album? Uh, man, how did it impact you? Like, what are some of your fondest memories when this album came out or when Nelly came out? Man, let me know in the comments, please, please, please. I want to know your story or your experiences, man. You know, I'm from Memphis, but I want to know how was the vibes in the city of St. Louis when Nelly dropped? Because of course, dude became a worldwide superstar, but I want to know how it felt for the hometown people to see someone from their city blow up the way um, it, he did and put the city on like he did, man. Please let me know in the comments. Like I said, I don't even think Universal uh, could predict how this was going to go for Nelly cuz by the time you know Nelly started performing at the Super Bowl and things like that in like mid 2001 Country Grammar was 8 million sold and if you don't know as of you know today Country Grammar is certified diamond which means it sold 10 million records and you don't have too many rap albums that are certified diamond there's only a few of them and Nelly is one of them. And the fact that his debut album was able to do that, that just shows you how big and how impactful the whole movement was as far as Nelly and the St. Lunatics, man. Nelly was, his, he just ended up becoming a, a superstar.
Now, with Country Grammar still moving a lot of units, I guess Universal felt like, you know, we're going to let Country Grammar still do its thing because, you know, it's, it was still selling. So what they decided to do was basically they granted Nelly his own label, which would be Dirty ENT, and they would end up putting out the St. Lunatics album, Free City. Now, Free City would end up coming out June 5th of 2001. You had the hit singles, uh, Midwest Swing, uh, Summer in the City. And I remember having this album as well, too, because you had uh, Show Me What They Want, which was, I like this song. I always like this song. Uh, this is the life. And I was also, you know, I like the song what they had with Brian McKnight, Grooving Tonight. I don't know why they didn't push that as a single, but, you know, hey. But... A lot of people slept on the St. Lunatics album. It was a pretty dope album, if you ask me. And Free City would end up going double platinum. So that let you know that these guys were definitely on the road. And I would say that Murphy Lee really showcased, he was able to showcase his rapping ability as far as on this album. You know, outside of Nelly, Murphy Lee has always been my favorite uh, lunatic as far as, you know, Lyrics wise, do always brought you know the hardest punchlines and six teams in my. Now at this point, Nelly is a full fledged superstar. He's everywhere at this point, far as awards, um, hit singles, you know, collaborating with other artists. But there's this thing called the sophomore jinx. And, you know, the pressure was definitely on for Nelly to deliver uh, another great album because with, with the sales of Country Grammar, he definitely had some pressure on his back and Universal is putting the building behind him. And basically, he ended up delivering as far as the Nellyville album. Now, I got to a point where I, I, I had both albums, Country Grammar and Nellyville. Nellyville ended up becoming my favorite. You know, and you have people who who consider country grammar better than Nellyville. You know, that's always been a debate. But Nelly definitely knocked it out of the park because not only he had his first number one single fire as uh, hot in here, like it was number one across all charts, you know. And not to mention, he had another number one single with Dilemma and a of uh, the album Nellyville, it debuted number one. So Nelly definitely delivered. That was his first number one album. And not to mention, he sold 630,000 copies in the first week. Dude basically killed the charts and he was number one for nearly two months. It lets you know, like, that's why Nelly said what he said. When it came to releasing music, the competition was fierce because look at the artists that he was having to go against at this time. This is when people actually bought records. For some of y'all, you all wasn't old enough or, or not outside to even know what it was like. So it was a whole different ball game. This ain't the streaming era. This is the CDs and tapes era. So now, of course, Nellyville had other singles such as uh, Work It With Justin Timberlake. Uh, they had Air Force Ones, which was another big hit. And Pimp Juice, which got a real, real bad reception. A lot of people did not like Pimp Juice. I don't know why, but I feel like it was a it was a cool single. But the Nellyville intro, I always loved that. I'd rather listen to it like on the vinyl or a CD because it don't, when you hear it on like an Apple Music or a Spotify, it's the, it doesn't hit the same. It really don't. You know, you realize when that you upload some of these older records or these older albums to these streaming platforms, the mixing is off. It's just, it don't sound the same. So I prefer to listen to it on a vinyl or a CD. But the Nellyville intro always, always is, always been it for me. And I like them boys with the uh, St. Lunatics and I always love On The Grind, you know? And not to mention, 
You uh, got number one, which was originally on the uh, Train of Day soundtrack. And you had the Rock the Mic remix, Fires with Beans and Freeway, where, and you had Murphy Lee and you had Nelly, you know, basically trading shots with KRS One because at the time here, KRS had, you know, some issues going on, which is something I still never got. I was a young dude when that happened and I didn't understand it then. I knew who KRS was and I definitely knew who Nelly was. Those were two totally different artists at the time. It's like, how did this even happen? So, but you know, it was all, all only on wax. So, but Nellyville would end up selling seven million copies, you know, at the end of it. And basically, you can say it matched the same success as Country Grammar. Far as you know, two number one singles. He won a bunch of awards. He was able to go on tour and everything. So everything was just on looking good for Nelly. Far as you know, his superstar status in the game. Now, in the Dirty Versions album, it really didn't do well, but I don't think it was meant for that. I think it was just meant for Universal to throw something out because Nelly was still one of their biggest selling artists and they needed some to uh, release during the fourth quarter of 2003, which, you know, the album came out in November of 2003. That's the fourth quarter. And that's what mostly a lot of big acts end up throwing something out, you know, so therefore they can, you know, end the year off with something big. But this album right here, this is where we would get the song Is You. And we would end up getting the almighty tip drill. And this song and video caused a lot of controversy. If you know, you know. And also, if you grew up in the same era as me, that means you grew up during the BET Uncut era. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, I don't know if this was just supposed to be originally a double disc, but somehow it ended up being two albums, you know, being released on the exact same day. I don't know if Nelly and Universal came up with this idea, but it was actually a great idea, you know. Now, between both albums, you would get basically the best of both worlds when it came to Nelly, like meaning, you know, Sweat would be the party turn up stuff. Uh, far as Nelly and his records and then Soup would be the grown and mature and you can definitely tell far as the records if you listen to both the albums you definitely get that far as between the both projects now both albums will be released on the same day of September 13 2004 uh, Sweat would consist of the hits such as Flap Your Wings Tip Your Head and Nah 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 which was always my favorite of mine, produced by Jazzy Faye. And Soup, you would get singles such as My Place and They Say and the number one single, Over and Over. Sweat would end up debuting at number two on the Billboard charts, while Soup would end up debuting at number one. With the combined first week sales of both albums, 738,000 copies within the first week. Sweat would go on to be, you know, a platinum album which you know a million plus and suit would go on to be triple platinum with three million you know uh, albums sold and for me to me in my opinion this was kind of like the peak of the Nelly streak you know I feel like after these two albums and all the success that came with it this was the beginning of Nelly slowing down or whatever like that because at this point he had already a, a different business venture as far as with apple bottom jeans and he had got into movies and things like that and he was you know he had the label popping as far as dirty ent so he had already started to venture out in different business ventures and things like that so 
And it's not to say that, oh, he wasn't hot anymore. It's just the game was changing and you had new artists. Uh, you had different groups and artists coming in the game at the time. Yeah, I think by the time 2005, this when Houston, Texas had took over and you just the South had just completely just took over. And not to mention you had uh, 50 Cent and G-Unit still running stuff. So, you know, I just feel like Nelly, that whole run right there was really kind of coming to an end, and he was able to still squeeze out a number one single with the uh, the song Grills. You know, he was still able to squeeze that out, and you know, I just, in my opinion, I think that Nelly definitely had a great run as far as those albums, and not not and not even get to mention the features, some of the hit songs he was featured on. You know, I didn't even get into that, but his run was just, you know, incredible. You got to think, combined sales of singles and albums nearly sold uh, over 30 million within just four to five years. He came out in 2000 and, you know, that, that peak and that run kind of ended right in 2005. Dude dominated. He had, he had his run. And... I don't think you really had too many people who could do that. You know, you had some people up there far as the Ludacris is, far as the 50 Cents, uh, far as Ja Rule and DMX. And I don't even think you really can slick get that now outside of a Drake. But I just wanted to, you know, show people that, you know, regardless of what you may think of Nelly, you might not even be a fan or you think his music didn't age that well, but dude had a very incredible run far in music, far as in music. And hence the reason why he's still able to tour on these festivals and, you know, have, you know, an hour shows because, you know, he still has classic songs that, you know, bring back a lot of memories for a lot of people who go out to these old school concerts. You know, I know it's 2024 Nelly is considered old school now. But still, and you know, and I wanted to do this video because I, one of the things I've noticed within black culture is that we wait until someone either passes away or something tragic happens. Then we want to give them their flowers and we want to say, oh, man, he was running it. He was killing it when nobody touching him. But yet when they're alive or when you bring their name up, we quit to basically belittle them and trash the legacy that they had already laid out. And I'm, I'm not one of those individuals who, as far as my channel is concerned, I'm not going to sit here and wait until someone passes away or something happens to try to all big them up. No, I'm bigging them up now. They like Nelly deserve his flowers just like anyone else. If anything, Nelly laid down the blueprint for a lot of these artists today. And if you want to keep it real. But I just hope y'all enjoyed this video. Y'all let me know in the comments what are some of your favorite Nelly songs, some of your favorite Nelly uh, albums. Uh, do you remember the first time you heard about Nelly? Have you been to any of his, uh, his concerts or anything like that? Let me know in the comments, man. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. And so, therefore, you can get the notifications anytime I uh, drop a new video, man. My name is Moss, and I'm out. You. Yeah.